Hey, creative souls. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm really happy that you're here. My name is Johnny. I'm a published fiction writer and a retired adjunct writing professor. For two decades, I helped very reluctant college students get their words on the page. Now I help people write books and I teach screenwriting and fiction writing to adults in custody. I call myself a word witch, and if you want to know more about what I mean by that, check out my video called On Being a Word Witch. I believe I'm on this earth to heal the world through stories, whether it's the ones that I write and tell or the ones I help you write and tell. I'm new here on YouTube, and I embrace the notion of the positive ebb and flow of energetic reciprocity. So if something about me or my content resonates with you, please like, share, and subscribe because the larger my following, the more I will be able to accomplish my quest to heal the world through story. I would be forever grateful because as I always say, stories can heal the world. So let's do it together. So I wanted to talk a little bit today about some of the books that I have read over the years about writing and storytelling that really had an impact on me. Some of these were from very, very long ago when I first started writing and you know, as I was going through my bookshelf and trying to find some books that I could share with you, and I, I noticed that some of them that I read early on, all the underlines and brackets, and I was just like gobbling up all this information and just really on fire with the, the notion of writing and being a writer. And so some of these I've had for many, many years, and, and some of them are quite old, but I think they still stand up and they're very good. And these are not necessarily books about uh, the writing of craft. I will get to that. If I only had more hours in the day, if I only right now did not have a day job, right? I would be just filling my YouTube channel with, with content. And so that is my goal. And I will do this as often and as well as I possibly can, learning as I go. So, which is like I said in another video that I posted, about how starting a YouTube channel is like writing. We just have to jump in at some point, right? And start doing. And so to help us along the way, there are, you know, endless, endless books out there that can help us. These are just a few of my favorites. And I will share some of them. I will share a little bit of what's inside and what I like about them. And I will also leave a list of them all in the um, description below. So the first one that I want to share with you is this sweet little book, The Mindful Writer by Dinty Moore. Dinty Moore the writer, not the maker of stew. Um, what I love about this is, so a lot of the books that I love, like I said, are not about craft. And if you've noticed so far in the few videos that I've uploaded, if you've been following along, a lot of what I talk about, a lot of what I teach is about mindset because so much of writing is about mindset. The best way to learn to write is to just write, to read and write. Those I think are the two best teachers and to follow people, other writers that we admire and appreciate and really understand how they do what they do. But as I said, a lot of writing is about mindset and it's about setting ourselves up so that we can be successful and really having that willingness to treat writing as a practice, not as a task or a chore that we have to accomplish um, and then end up with a finished product. And of course we want the finished product because we wanna put it out into the world. But it's really that what happens in between the concept, the idea that comes to us, and then the finished product that we send out to magazines, journals, publishers, agents. And so a lot of it is just about what goes on up here in our minds, the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves and our writing. Little books like this, I think are just little gems. And so let me share one short little thing with you. And I chose one, uh, it's a quote. So what this is basically, they are quotes and excerpts from other people's writings that he then kind of ponders and thinks about on the page. And some of them are just lovely. And I chose this one by Raymond Carver, this quote uh, that Dinty Moore talks about because Carver is one of my idols. I just adore his writing and I will explain more about why in a future video, but for now, 
The quote that Denty Moore speaks to here from Carver is this, there are significant moments in everyone's day that can make literature. That's what you ought to write about. And it seems like a very simple statement, and it is actually, but there is so much truth in it. And I think oftentimes what keeps people from writing is they think they have to have some grand theme to write about. They have to have some grand idea in mind before they can start. And the grand ideas come from the everyday things that happen to us. It's from being human and trying to be in the world. And so here is what Moore says about it. If you are familiar with Carver's brilliant short stories, you know that they often focus on the simplest of daily interactions between people, on the quiet exchanges, mundane events. His stories are told in simple language as well, in what came to be known as the minimalist style. And they are uniquely powerful, honest. They will invariably grab you in the gut because they are real. Every life contains these moments, but not every writer knows to include them. Not every writer sees them for what they are. So how do you discover the significant moments in your own daily life? You sit, you listen. All right, so what I love about that is, and this is packed with things like this. So what that small passage encourages us to do is to listen to ourselves. So often I think writers feel like they have to be checking out everybody else and seeing what everybody else is doing and how they're doing it. And really everything we need comes from inside us. It comes from our minds, from our hearts, from our souls and our spirits. And those are the things that we ought to be writing about. And so to get quiet, and this is whether you want to call it meditation, daydreaming, whatever, quiet moments to just sit and settle down inside yourself is invaluable, I believe, for you and your writing practice. All right, so highly recommend The Mindful Writer by Dinty Moore. Another lovely book about writing is called The Zen in the Art of Writing by Ray Bradbury. So I got really hooked on Bradbury when I was in my 20s. I just devoured his books. Love them, love them. So there's a, a small bit here that I want to read to you from this book. And so these are just short essays written by Bradbury about writing. And I love looking inside the minds of other writers and hearing about their philosophies. And I want to share this one as well with you because I think it really is a great way for us to remember really what it is to be a writer and what it takes. And this really is is very in line with what I just read from you out of, uh, out of Moore's book. So in this essay called Run Fast, Stand Still, or The Thing at the Top of the Stairs, or New Ghosts from Old Minds. All right, long title. Short essay. Here's the beginning of the essay. He says, run fast, stand still. This, the lesson from lizards, for all writers. Observe almost any survival creature. You see the same, jump, run, freeze. In the ability to flick like an eyelash, crack like a whip, vanish like a steam. Here, this instant gone the next, life teems the earth. And when that life is not rushing to escape, it is playing statues to do the same. See the hummingbird there, not there. As thought arises and blinks off, so this thing of summer vapor, the clearing of a cosmic throat, the fall of a leaf, and where it was, a whisper. What can we writers learn from lizards, lift from birds? In quickness is truth. The faster you blurt, the more swiftly you write, the more honest you are. In hesitation is thought. In delay comes the effort for a style instead of leaping up on truth, which is the only style worth dead falling or tiger trapping. In what between the scurries and flights, what? Be a chameleon, ink blend, chromosome, change with the landscape, be a pet rock, lie with the dust, rest in the rainwater, in the filled barrel by the drain spout outside your grandparents' window long ago. Be dandelion wine in a ketchup bottle, capped and placed with an ink inscription. 
June morn, first day of summer, 1923. So what is he saying? What I get from this is he is saying, follow the way a lizard behaves. Jump, run, and freeze. This is what a writer must do, right? We can't languish in, in a monotone life if we want to write. We have to jump, we have to do things, we have to experience things. We have to dash and then we have to pause. This means we have to live our lives, like we have to fully live our lives. And so many writers, we want to isolate. And isolation or solitude, maybe is a better word for it, is absolutely necessary for writers so that we can, as you know, we just talked about with this passage from Dinty Moore's book, there are moments that we writers have to sit and be calm and reflect and think and let things kind of settle down inside us and shuffle around so we can begin to make sense of them or figure out what it is we want to make sense of. And then other moments in our lives, we have to be moving, we have to be out, we have to be doing things and experiencing things, noticing people, noticing behaviors, having our own experiences. So to have a writing life means that we have to have this combination of lived experience, quiet moments, and it really goes along with what I teach um, oftentimes about having to be both subjective and objective. And I think that's what this passage from this essay says is we have to go out and live. We have to be busy. We have to jump and run and thrive. And then we have to settle. And I don't mean settle as in accept whatever is given to us. I mean settle as in get quiet and meditative so that we can create. And I like what he said about in the sprinting. So if we can think about that sprinting as part of the writing, it's that initial brain dump that is very important. It's that the dumping, the clearing of what's inside us that can then take us to the next phase, which is the shaping it like clay. So that dumping is the clay I talk about that we throw on the wheel. So that's the sprinting I think that Bradbury is is speaking of in this excerpt from his essay. So I love this idea of, you know, to live a writer's life is to get out and live and like live fully and then come back home in solitude, settle, rest, and let things shuffle around inside us so that we can then share it with the world. Okay, so this book, Zen and the Art of Writing, is really valuable in packed with all kinds of insights like that. All right, moving on. The next book I want to share with you is by Matthew Fox called Creativity. And I don't know if you can see the subtitle where the divine and the human meet. And I was drawn to this. If you watch my video on um, the magic that happened in my life when I wrote the first draft of Miranda's Garden, my novel, I discovered this book shortly after that, I think, and really was drawn to his main argument. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I really embrace this idea that creativity and writing are essential to our human lived experience. I think we are all creative beings. We all choose a different way to express that. And I believe, as I've said, that if we don't I have a great metaphor for this about sourdough starter. I will do a whole video just on that. It'll be short, but it's, it's a metaphor I use a lot because I believe that when we are not creating, when we don't respond to this impulse inside us, which I think is our life force, we make ourselves sick in all ways, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. My takeaway from this book is that foxes overarching argument is that when we don't create, in other words, he uses a different way of describing it, we get sick. He talks a lot in here about how, or some at least in here, about how he believes that addiction would not exist if we were able to freely create. And, and I agree with him. And he makes some really stunning points in this book. He is a theologian, so he will in here refer a lot to heaven and God, but it is not, it's more in a theoretical sense, all right? And I have marked, there's just so much in here that I had marked, I just didn't know what to pick. He says, 
I picked this one small section that I had marked. Creativity and imagination are not frosting on a cake. They are integral to our sustainability. They are survival mechanisms. They are of the essence of who we are. They constitute our deepest empowerment. Yes. Yes and yes. I just got goosebumps reading that because I this is everything I do in my work life is based on that belief. So I highly recommend this. Very, very thoughtful, very just incredible book, I think, on the whole uh, concept of creativity and its importance in our lives. I think it's absolutely essential. And I won't go off on a tangent, but the reason that many of us can't create, don't create, is because of capitalism. I mean, let's be honest. If we weren't out chasing a dollar so that we could feed ourselves and put a roof over our heads, most of us, I think, would be creating something. And so it's just a con constant chronic plight of the creative to find that balance. That book by Fox really drives this home for me. Another one, and, and I'll be honest, I could not find a passage in here. This is an interesting book. It's called The Storytelling Animal, How Stories Make Us Human. So this again is by Jonathan Gottschall, and this is based on a lot of science that's been done around the whole concept of storytelling and stories. They are absolutely essential to our existence as humans. And so it's, it's very fascinating and I'm, I'm very happy that science has decided to really look at the importance of stories. And in here he talks, he talks about fictional stories mostly. And he talks about kind of the witchery of story and how it draws us in and casts these spells on us. Other chapters are called The Riddle of Fiction, Hell is Story Friendly, Night Story, The Mind of a Storyteller, The Moral of Story. I just found it very fascinating. And so, like I said, I really couldn't pick out, I spent way too long trying to find one passage. There's just so much of this book that's interwoven that it was hard for me to pluck out a paragraph or a page. So highly recommend this. And the reason I recommend this to writers is because I really want anyone who has the inclination to write and who hesitates or holds back or gets stuck, I want them to understand why stories matter so much to our human existence, why the stories can and will, I believe, save us. It's my way of hopefully getting you off your butt or on your butt in your chair if you are hesitating about writing because the world does need your stories. Absolutely, it's medicine. It's, it's not frivolous, it is not a luxury, it is absolutely essential to our existence. Okay, I get very fired up about this. Here's another one, and let me see what I marked here. Okay, this one is a collection of essays by famous writers talking about writing. And again, I think it's, I think it's really important to have a writer's mindset and to be able to contextualize writing as something other than just the mechanics of putting words on a page. It's about embodying being a writer and being a human and seeing the world through different eyes and having the courage to report what you see. And so the essay in here that I wrote, I'll just pick a short paragraph. It's an essay by Joy Williams called Uncanny, The Singing That Comes From Certain Husks. Strange title, but in this paragraph, she says, the significant story possesses more awareness than the writer writing it. The significant story is always greater than the writer writing it. This is the absurdity the disorienting truth, the question that is not even a question. It is the Cohen of writing. So what does this mean? This kind of ties in with the whole idea of, I've talked in, in my video about the magical things that happened uh, when I wrote Miranda's Garden and how I really, when I am in deep flow, I feel like I am in touch with the divine. I think that's what this short passage I just read is getting at. It's about how we can sit down to write a story and then something else takes over. 
something else possesses us and it allows either our deep inner wisdom or the wisdom that lives far outside us to come down and work through us. You know, I'm not a religious person, so I don't call that God. I call it the divine and it means something very different to me, but something overtakes us and allows us to write significant stories that are bigger than we are. And so that's why I think we can, we can take from our seemingly mundane lived experience and start to write about it. And then it becomes something so much bigger than us. And that's what happened to me when I wrote Miranda's Garden. I think this is what Joy Williams is saying in that small passage is that we have to trust that our small lived experience, if we see it that way, is enough to write about and then also be open for that blowing up into something much bigger and greater, more significant and important than we imagine. To me, that is the magic and the just what leaves me kind of awestruck about writing fiction and about the whole process. All right, so recommend this, Why I Write, uh, Thoughts on the Craft of Fiction. And the editor is uh, Will Blythe. Okay, this one, an oldie but a goodie, I came to, so this is The Art of Fiction, Notes on Craft for Young Writers. This is by John Gardner. What drew me to Gardner is that he was best friends with Raymond Carver. As I said, I'll talk more about my love for Raymond Carver in a future video, but just that he was friends with Carver, I wanted to know about him. And he is well known for his own fiction as, as well as his teaching of fiction. So he was a professor, Gardner was. And you probably can't read this, but this is a quote from John LaRoe about this book. And it says, a necessary handbook, a stern judge, an encouraging friend. And that is absolutely the tone of this book. At some times he is so stern with things, it's like, holy shit, like it scares me. But by the end, it's like, I totally felt encouraged when I first read it. And just now reading through some of it today, it made me feel like, oh, I need to go back and check some things about my own writing that maybe I've gotten lazy in. And he gets very precise about certain aspects of writing. He was writing about uh, passive voice. And I don't necessarily write in passive voice, but he was also talking about, here it is. He was writing about clumsy writing. And by the time I read this passage about clumsy writing, I thought, oh no, am I a clumsy writer? Maybe I am. I don't know. I don't claim to be like the best writer in the world. I just know I'm passionate about writing and I love creating stories. He talks about the faults of clumsy writing and he says, they alienate the experienced reader, or at the very least, make it hard for him to concentrate on the fictional dream, and they undercut the writer's authority. So absolutely, we don't want to be clumsy in our writing because we don't want to break that dream, right? It's the dream that we all want. It's why we do it, and it's why readers pick up our books. He says the most obvious forms of clumsiness, really failures in basic skills, include such mistakes as, here's a long list, inappropriate or excessive use of the passive voice, inappropriate use of introductory phrases containing infinite verbs. I might do that a little too much. Shifts in diction level or the regular use of distracting diction, lack of sentence variety, lack of sentence focus, faulty rhythm, accidental rhyme, needless explanation, and careless shifts in psychic distance. All right, that's a lot. And then he says, let us run through these one by one. And he does. So now that I've read this, I feel like I need to reread this part of his book and check my writing because we all want to keep getting better, right? So highly recommend, love the voice and tone of this, this book. And it really, the stern judge part, absolutely. And encouraging friend, yes. It's a very, very great book for people who want to write novels, I would say. All right, this book is by Susan K. Perry, and it is called Writing in Flow, Keys to Enhance Creativity. And I chose this book, I found this book when I was doing research for, I, I have mentioned my writing through the body method that I've created. I've written a book about it and I'm currently revising it. So. Who next year is, I, I've got to get this thing finished next year and in the hands of a publisher. That is my goal. But I found this because part of what I talk about in the beginning section of it, kind of the philosophy 
that informed me wanting to create that method was understanding flow and all of the magical things that happened to me when I wrote Miranda's Garden and experienced that really deep flow that just kind of blew my world apart in some good ways, ultimately. This started off as Perry's doctoral dissertation. So she has done a lot of exploring into flow state, what creates it, what allows it, how to use it. I think as writers, that's really valuable to kind of understand how our minds work when we're in and out of flow state. And so just a little bit here, she says, losing and finding the self. Your sense of self is altered during flow. You may feel strangely when you come out of your writing room, as though you've been participating in some bizarre ritual, as though your body's been taken over by something. Possibly you've had the common experience of reading over your own work and seeing it for the first time. That is what flow state does. And that is what I have talked about in past videos and what happened with me when I wrote Miranda's Garden. It's almost like being taken over, like I said, and, and allowing our conscious mind to get the hell out of the way so that our subconscious, so that our own deep wisdom and our ability to connect with, I think, universal wisdom, energies, can enter in and, and allow us to create something that's that can be remarkable and can change people. So highly recommend that book. It's, it's really fascinating on how the mind and flow and writing works. And then last in my stack, and I know there are tons of other great writing books out there, books on writing, and I would love to know in the comments what some of yours are. And I will start creating a list of writing books that I will post on my website or somewhere for easy access to people. So I would love it if you would help me kind of grow that list. Last one I want to share today is it's a book about the part of writing that none of us writers really want to deal with. And it's the business of writing, but it's absolutely essential if we're going to make a difference in the world. So I, I've mentioned before that I am not widely published. And a lot of that is I spent so much time teaching other people how to write and neglected my own practice. And another is I just didn't want to deal with the business of, of writing. Like I just wanted to, I've written a lot of things, but I just didn't want to deal with like the practice of having to submit and, and it wasn't even about rejection. Like I don't care about so-called rejection from a publication. Like it doesn't phase me in the least. I don't really care. And as I said before, what I've learned is that when I do take the time to send my work out enough, somebody says yes. It's, it really is a numbers game in many cases. And of course, we can't, we can't send out crap. We have to polish our work. But once we feel like a piece of our writing is finished enough to send out, then send it. Send it. And I'm saying this to myself as well because I still don't do it enough. But this book... The Business of Being a Writer. So good. And it's really like, look at it. It is tiny print. It's just packed with stuff. And she, Jane Friedman, if you don't know about Jane Friedman, follow her, find her, follow her. She has a, a blog that, she has a lot of guest bloggers on it, but they're very good. They talk about all things writing and publishing. She, every year, puts out a new, she's like, my go-to expert on uh, publishing because she's just been in it for years and she stays up on the trends. I've tried to do that myself and I, it, I just can't. It's not possible for me given my current life situation. So it's nice to have people like Jane Friedman who love to dig in and learn about what's going on in the publishing world. Every year she puts out a free PDF that breaks down all the possible ways that you can publish and kind of where to look and what to expect and how to approach it. And it's one big PDF that she makes public, it's free, and she does this every single year because like I said, everything changes um, pretty frequently in the publishing world. So she's just a, an amazing resource. I follow her on Instagram and I don't know if she has a YouTube channel, I will check. 
but she's a really, really valuable resource. So I highly recommend this book. And this really talks about like how to publish in magazines if you wanna write short stories, um, personal essays, poetry. She talks about queries, which is a whole other kind of writing that we writers have to learn how to do and get really good at. She talks about proposals, social media, just everything that you need to know. So, yes, hard to believe that I get this excited about a book about the business of writing because I used to loathe it, but highly recommend this one. So, I hope those help you and please do add your favorites in the, the description below, or the, sorry, the comments below and I will create a list that I will then put probably on my website for people to just grab because I want people to be informed so that they can write because like I said, stories can heal the world. So let's do it together. And I also wanted to mention, I have a little like card at the end of, of this video where you can go get my 10 ways to banish writer's block so you can write your novel. And I would love it if you would grab that and have it on hand. It's a little, a luscious little flip book that I made. And I love it because of the sound the pages make when they turn, but it's a little digital flip book. You can get it for free on my website. And yes, I do ask for your email in exchange. But like I said earlier, to me, it's this energetic flow of reciprocity that happens between humans. And it's not just one thing for another and it stops there. I really do want to grow a community of people who, I get emotional about this every time I talk about it. I want to create a community of people who embrace this idea that stories can heal the world. And we really do need to do it together. We need to support each other. We need to read each other's work and learn how to give people constructive critique in the spirit of helping with compassion and love. So many writers are competitive and they just wanna mow people down. And we just, we need to help each other create our stories so that we can create the change that the world needs. All right, so I really hope that you will pick up that little flip book that I made. It has 10 things you can do if you find you're feeling stuck with your writing. I hope that you will use them over and over and over. All right, that is it for me today. Thank you so much as always for watching. And as always, I send you mad writing mojo. Happy writing.